now. And we're back! Oh, sorry about that. A little technical difficulties. Part two, Part um, two. apparently. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure how have, this is going to go, but we'll just we'll roll on with it. We'll have several files. Yes. And for you to listen to. <laughs> By the way, congratulations to us. We're on iHeartRadio now. Yes. And I, it may actually affect the format of this show, and I'll tell you why. Because when you go to iHeartRadio, it randomly will give you uh, the latest file. When, when you start listening, you're listening to the latest edition. If you hit the next button on iHeartRadio, it'll take you to another one of our shows. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we may not necessarily. Gosh, we could have short shows. We could do. We could do fifteen minute segments. Oh, re- if we want to. Re- so it'll automatically move to the next show. Yeah, it goes right into it. It's just like any other thing. On iHeartRadio, Spreaker doesn't do that. Oh, on on iHeartRadio, you could even hit uh, random, or I I don't know if if it'll let us do it on that channel. But like for instance, if I type in. Um, I don't know. You know, Led Zeppelin. A channel will show up called Led Zeppelin. Oh, and then a play. Th- It'll play a Led Zeppelin song. As soon as that song's over, another song will show up, and it may not even necessarily be a Led Zeppelin song. Oh, right. But, but that same channel, genre. yeah, that channel will have that genre of music. So you're saying our Smith Radio channel will continue to play our stuff? Yeah, but if it's a three-hour show. Um, you're going to have to listen to the whole three hours before, before it goes, to the, it goes to the next one. But while you're listening to it, you can hit the next button. Okay. Uh, for that reason, I could see us maybe going to much shorter segments or maybe um, just maybe stopping it and going to another segment as soon as what we're talking about is done. So maybe we'll do like a Ferguson segment or we'll do a, um, a Cuba segment or right. whatever. But so... So Obama is pulling a Jimmy Carter. Right. Well, hold on, hold on. Before we go that far with it, because it, uh, Jimmy is much better than Obama. Um, By the way, I did check right now on iHeartRadio. If you're listening to us on our iHeartRadio right now, we're probably not live. It says live. Well, let me check again. And I don't... Let me close down iHeartRadio and open it back up. Because what I did when we first got on iHeartRadio was check it. Right. Our latest file was up, and I could listen to it. But I just tried to open it as we're recording. See, right here, this is called CNN Helps Ferguson Obama Gone Rogue. Right. When did we record that? I got New York Cop Murdered Media Revenge. Okay, so... so uh, our actual show that we're recording right now is probably not live. Then. Okay, I heard that part. <laughs> okay. But you're listening to it on Spreaker. Yeah, yeah through Spreaker. Okay. So, but uh, uh, before I lose my train of thought, I wanted to get back to what we were talking about when, it, uh, in, when we in got dealing cut with, off. with capitalism. Okay. And capitalism is, for all intents and purposes... When the media would call it the trickle down effect, yeah, uh, and, and they've again, really done a great job of branding that as an evil trickle down as a bad thing. Trickle down a, economics. Well, a comic I can't remember who which uh, comedian said this, but it was genius. Great marketing on the communist side. Okay, he said they're literally pissing on you because that's trickle down economics. Yeah, I can't. Who said that? Do you remember that line? Yeah, that sounds familiar. So if you think about it, folks, um, if your boss, if your boss at the company you work at, he has a company. If he's in an environment, meaning the, the country that he lives in, if he's in an environment where the country is doing economically well, very well, uh, like America during the the mid to late 80s and all the way through the 90s, where people could get a job at any given time, and bosses were looking for the best talent, and people were getting hired and things were rolling through. Okay, if your boss is in that environment, he is willing to pay you what you're worth. And that's how it comes down. Well, He's uh, able to sell his goods to the market, 
Markets are doing well, so they're selling a lot. Right, and a communist would say, well, how's he going to sell anything if the people at the bottom who need to buy it don't have the money? Because the goods that he sent, well, the company I work for, we actually sell our goods to other corporations. But those corporations are buying it from you with money that they got from selling their product to an end consumer. And, right. And at the, all the way at the end Which of the line. larger level. At the end of the line, you have people with money in a wallet. Correct. Like and you the and communists I, like you would and I, say, we need to load that wallet up. Well, but the, the And they pro- call it trickle up. Right. But the products we make would go to somebody like Siemens or somebody like uh, Duke Energy. Uh, and Duke Energy makes their money by everybody who uses electricity. Right. So everybody pays a small amount for the benefit of having... Electricity. I can I can break I could just simplify this whole thing. Because if you have a capitalist that says well we have to have the money to pay you more and that's where it's trickling down and then at the end of the day you could have that money and then go and, and and but then the communists would have the exact same argument and it would sound just as valid and say, Well let's pay all the consumers so that way they can make purchases that will trickle up, and then the corporations will have their money. So both arguments sound equally valid, but here is where... This is why capitalism works like a charm, and communism fails miserably. Every single time. Every it single time. It has never, ever worked. The reason why you have to do trickle down and trickle up always fails is because the end consumer that's going to use the money to buy stuff, that's going to end up supporting the corporations, ha- uh, the corporations have to have products through labor. Okay, they, Work has to be done by human beings in order to make the products to buy. And if you don't have to work to make them, make the products, right. then it's not going to be made. Right. The products won't get made. And if and, you and you're like, give, what are you talking about? No, in communist in a communist country, people have the option of not working. Yeah, because the government you get paid the, is, same. the government is just distributing all the money out and then they're saying, Okay, go off into the market and purchase your stuff and, and then that'll go up to the uh to the to the, it'll trickle up. Let's trickle it up. Come on, everybody trickle it up. Here's the problem. They, the government won't have the money to give you if the products aren't being made, if the services aren't being performed. Why would you perform any services if you already got the money? Nancy Pelosi said, this is a sound clip, this is all over the internet. It's not hard to find. So go search this. She said that for every person that gets on unemployment, the economy grows. That is such an obviously <laughs> false statement. That is the mo- and you know why? Because she is 100% all in on trickle up. Right. Communism. Yeah. If we can pay these unemployed people enough money, they're going to go out and spend it all and the economy will be booming. Money doesn't grow the economy. Work right. grows the economy. Right. And you can only incentivize people to work by saying the more you work the more we'll pay you and there's another very that's capitalism right and there's another very important integral part to this whole thing that that just it falls apart communism believes wholeheartedly that there is a um it, it's a it's a pie oh yeah this pie it, they it, think that that the entire economy is one Finite, finite size, size pie. pie, and the more slice, the bigger the slice of the pie, that means the less the others get. And by the way, this is why they believe in population control. Oh, they're yes. like, there's not going to be enough pie to go around. We need to, we need to reduce. You, this is all over. Margaret Sanger. Well, she's one. Did you ever hear about that big monolith that was built by some progressive? There was this, oh, I'll have to find out. I think, was it Glenn Beck? Somebody was talking about this. This was a long time ago. Some progressive way back during the Cold War era built a giant 
concrete or stone monolith okay. that sticks up out of the ground. He built this thing because he knew, and everybody back in the Cold War knew, that we were all going to be wiped out by a nuclear war. It was, it was going to happen. I mean, it we, was not if. It was when. It was when. Yes. Absolutely. Everybody knew. So this rich billionaire progressive built this giant monolith to teach the survivors how to live from here on out. Why? It was like a Ten Commandments for the survivors of the Holocaust. The, the Ho- Holocaust. Hopefully the bomb wasn't dropped near this to put it into rubble. That's, but no, no, no. That's why it was made out of a giant chunk of stone. Because it would survive. Wow. Unless it was like a absolute direct, direct hit. hit yeah. But even if it was nearby, it would survive this. So... So if you read it, and I don't have it in front of me, I, I did not even think we were going to talk about this during the show. In fact, this is the first time I've even thought about this for a long time. But one of the big things that was the most controversial thing on there was that it is the duty of all the people to maintain a population of less than, uh, and the number was on there. <laughs> and the number was shockingly low. Like, literally, they wanted to have, like, a purge of some sort. Now, it didn't explain how you were supposed to keep the population down, right. but it was a commandment to keep the po- and the, it was low. Like, well, right now, I'll give you an example. Like, right now, what is it, 7 billion people in the world? Yeah, just a little I over. believe the number, we'll have to look this up, but it was, like, in the several million. No! Like, fi- like 50 million. Oh, There's my. There's, like, s- America alone is 300 million. 300 million, and they wanted to maintain a world population size of 50 million or less. Something like that. That wouldn't be possible. Well, well, I, I, I per- it's not really possible, but I think they were thinking, with that low of a population, you would have the kind of frontier, freedom world type that, that America was during the early years of the settling. Wow. Giant. Uh, from as far as the eye can see, landscapes that, with the, the problem with that is, is that human human natures uh, human nature human beings will do what they do, and they will ramp it back up again. Well, all creatures right procreate to try to get their population up. It's a big you know right. survival of the fittest. The only the only way that I can feasibly see population control, and this may be controversial for me to say. Oh, I like that. But I honestly, I honestly, honestly believe that uh, the liberals, the progressives, the Democrats love to keep abortion alive and legal and what do you frequent. Mean by alive? <laughs> <laughs> the doctors are alive. Oh, right, right. The to mother sometimes is lives. alive. Yeah, yeah. Most of the time. I'll give them that. I'll give them that. It's right. most of the time. I mean, the baby usually always dies. I don't know of any she, of them. That there was a, a woman, <clears throat> I think Glenn Beck might have interviewed her. She's an abortion survivor. Yikes. Wow. Okay. Really crazy. I yeah, digress. <laughs> well, apparently there's a chemical abortion. Yeah. And that doesn't they, work all the time. Where they dump uh, acid inside the woman's womb or something like that. Yeah. And apparently they can survive. And if they do... Some doctors who are hopefully now in prison, some of them are, uh, would actually then murder the child after they were born if it was a an aborted baby that survived. Who was the doctor that just recently went? Oh yeah, he was. He killed thousands. A monster. The and media. Even, the media had to get that story over and done with ooh, to where yeah. we don't even remember his name. They did a damn good job. Oh, anyway, so they want this. They have to have this because, in their minds, they, and make no bones about it. You go to the West Coast, and you talk to any flaming lib female, and she'll tell you that the world is overpopulated. No, talk to any male. Talk to anybody. Any anybody any on, on the West Coast. H- hardcore progressive. Right. It could be East Coast. A, a, a New England. Uh, Progressive. Well, the reason why I say that is because even the radio stations out there, just before I left L.A., there was a woman that they interviewed, and she was starting a new trend she, in her 20s for women to become uh, to uh, have themselves sterilized. For the good of the world. Yes! 
Buy for the a- good of the world and for global warming, and she was gonna. And her and we her have husband, a nice segue to this her and her husband agreed that this was the best way to do this. This is what communism wants, though. Oh. And and I thought about it. And I said, you know what? She's right. That is best for us that she yeah, do that. It is it because is. I don't want her raising little red commie uh, diaper rubber baby diaper the, the red diaper person. babies <laughs> red diaper babies yeah. The red diaper babies. Yes. Which, by the way, Obama's a red diaper baby. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So but, uh, uh, the whole thing with, with Cuba, I want to wrap this up in a nutshell. Uh, how did I get in this nutshell? What, what 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 is a person doing in a nutshell like this? No. I really want to. We are definitely nuts in a shell. Yes. Originally, and I'm, I'm not going to go too far back, but uh, Batista. Batista is a man who, uh, through a revolution, became to power in Cuba and milked, as a dictator, milked Cuba for all it was worth. He brought in the mafia, the American mafia, to come in and uh, and uh, control the casinos and the hotels and the tourists, uh, all the money that was flowing in there. He then raided all the money, shared it with the mafia, American corporations were also attempting to get in and get some of the money, but the mafia and Batista regime were stealing and taking all the money from the corporations, and they found it non-profitable. Well, in 1959, New Year's Eve, Batista loaded up six aircraft with everything he could possibly hold, all the money, jewels and gold, everything that he had raped and pillaged the entire country of Cuba. The economy was literally in the tank. There's nothing left of the economy because of what this guy had done in his regime. And he flew to Puerto Rico to get out of Cuba to never return. Within seven months, you have Castro, who is a murderer, a killer. We have to be a murderer in order to implement communism in your country. Right. So he, it's a necessary thing, right? It, you have to, you have to. I so mean, if you hear of a communist leader, we don't. It's it would be redundant to say that he's also a mass murderer. No, because that's it's part and parcel of the right. name, right. correct? Um, so he enlisted the help of a good friend, Che Guevara. Oh, by the way, you low information or listeners are not knowing that name. But you know the picture. You know you the would, picture. You would recognize him if you saw him. <laughs> Incidentally, it is the most infamous or famous uh, silhouette posed picture of a scruggly old bearded 20, 30 year old man with the uh, with a beret, the French beret. I thought it was a beret. Uh, oh, beret. that would be what you put in your hair. <laughs> yes. <laughs> with the yellow star. If it's not, if it's silhouette, it's not colored in. But it was a yellow star of communism. Red star or yellow? Red hat, yellow star. Red star, uh, yellow hat. I've never seen a color <laughs> picture of it. All the right. pictures I've ever seen was just a... Uh, a monocolor silhouette type thing. And he's yeah. kind of looking up a little bit, real picturesque. Anyways, you've seen it on T-shirts, you've seen it in pictures, you've seen it everywhere. So, C-H-E, Che Guevara, look it up. Uh, so, he, Castro enlisted the help of Che. Che said, I'll take care of this part. Che was so brutal and so absolutely evil that he had the contractors come into his office and knock out an entire wall of his office and make it a glass wall because that wall faced the firing squads. Ah. And he loved, he just loved watching the firing squads do their job. It wow. really gave him a thrill. I actually have seen, if you've, if you've ever gone down the wrong rabbit hole on the Internet, I've seen some uh, videos where executions have taken place, real, you know, real actual executions, and it kind of gives me a little bit of queasy, a uh, little bit of uneasiness. Well, we watched that. We, we watched a couple of weeks ago the beheading. That was. Oh, well, you mean the fake one? No, the real one. I seen a real one. We did. We watched. Oh, together. Because remember, in our previous show. We just knocked that out of the park. They're all the fake. fake ones. Yeah, the, the fake, fake ones. ones. No, I, I wound up. Uh, 
stumbling across a real one. Well, the beheadings are the most gruesome ones. And that was just brutal. But even, even uh, I've seen some firing squad uh, footage. Right. And some similar, like, non-sanctioned firing, you know, uh, killing via AK-47. And it kind of gives me a, a sick feeling in my stomach because it's... It's just disgusting. In and real life, I saw someone get hit by a garbage truck. You told me about that. Wow. Late, and, and I called I tell Terry almost bar- right away. Yeah, you called me instantly, and I could tell by the uh, tone of your voice that you were extremely disturbed by it. And you were like, is he alive? I'm like, well, I didn't turn around to go see, but there's no way he could survive. He was in a wheelchair on the corner. I remember you corner. kind of describing it like you did see it. You know, you probably actually removed Passing. it right. from your mind. Yeah. You can do that. Yeah, when you're like traumatized mentally, you can just completely delete but it from your mind. It's and, and then finding out later, Control Alt Delete. Right, when you do that. Yeah, when finding out later that he really he did die and it was gruesome and awful. But but the whole time I was just, it was upsetting. It was consuming. Uh, the very fiber of my being was like pushing away from all that, and I couldn't even bring up the feelings Weren't now today walking? if I wanted to. You were like, you had care. Uh, w- the I had the kids with me, but they were two and three. But like in a baby carriage. Yeah, they're real young. You told me, because if you've ever had children before, like the first year, you end up walking around the neighborhood a lot. You Cause just cause do they, it. Because you throw them in the baby carriage because there's nothing else to do. They don't do anything. Right. So the best thing to do, toss them in the baby carriage and you take walks. So you end up doing a lot of walking when they're in their first year. Get some fresh air. And so... Brian was out for a walk, and next thing you know, he's calling me up like, oh, my gosh, you wouldn't believe what I saw. So my whole point of this is, though, is that no, that, that he's got he's looking at these firing squads because he likes to. It, 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 it gets him off. That's sick, twisted stuff. That is second in command to Castro. It got so bad with Che that Castro said, bro, you're going to have to go, and I'll tell you what you're going to have to go and do. What I want you to go away and do is go to some of these other South American countries and help spread the communism. Oh, okay. Because we're good here. I we're got it. We're good here. We're good I here. I mean, we've, we've already killed 20,000 of our own people. We're going to give you a promotion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're going to send you on a slow boat to China. No, it's a promo. Hey, dude, you are. Oh, yeah. The head You're of doing it all. such a good job. We decided to select you. Right. So, Che winds up... Um, in a country, I don't know if it was Bolivia or somewhere, somewhere in South America. We'll call it Bolivia. And he he wound up in an area of oh, of, go ahead. of farmers. Oh, it was a yeah. lot of farmers. And he went around to each one of these farmers trying to uh, unionize them, trying to get them collectively to, to bond together. And the problem he found was that they were capitalist farmers and believed in free market capitalism. Well, the hunt was on. Che's name was out. Murderer, apparently, in some of these countries, he was being hunted by the police because of his murderous ways. Well, these farmers took hold of Che and captured him until the police arrived to where they killed him. Awesome. I mean, that's just what had to happen. You have to stuff those things out. Yeah, I mean, in that, I mean, that's the way people uh, handle it sometimes, depending on what your country you're in. Right. So uh, Castro then began to uh, fight the good fight and listen to these terms. These are classic terms that Obama does as well. Uh, Obama never wants to be seen as governing. He never wants to be seen as leading. He's always there fighting the good fight. I'm here fighting for you. We got to keep keep on keep it on. We've got to keep I, hope alive. I, I would do it if I could, but I, they're just holding me back. Right. And we got to keep fighting the good fight. That is what Castro has done for the last 60 years. He keeps talking uh, like they're still in the revolution. And you're like, Brian, you're crazy. No, no, no. Did you hear this week? This is breaking news. Raul came out this week and said, made an announcement, the revolution is over. He said, wow, that is breaking news. <laughs> they, they have finally won. They have finally broken the spine 
of all the Cuban uh, people. Yeah, dissenters. Or all of them. All, all the Cuban people's backs have been broken. So the revolution So won. the revolution has been won. Oh, and that's boy. what this whole thing was about. I'm revolution. actually shocked that he would make I, such an announcement. That's like... It was kind of stupid of him to do. His to brother say, is saying, dude, dude, dude. dude. What do you... What do you, you that's do not realize, part of the playbook. You do realize that the end of the revolution is the end of us. Right. <laughs> what are because, you doing? Because the moment we stop fighting for whatever we're fighting for, if we don't come the up with a new fight. The imaginary finish line. It's like the light at the end of the tunnel that just never gets there. Right. You no, know, it's a mirage. Yep. we got to get to the mirage. Yep, yep. Absolutely. An, There's the water. The, There's the water. I see the it. I see it. is infinite. It doesn't end. Like, you know, in real life, you look at a map, oh, there's the edges of the desert. No, this desert that they're in goes on for infinity. And it wraps around itself. And you oh, don't even, you don't even it's know. It's a circle. Yeah, it's a circle as big as the it's Earth. It's like being on, an, on a planet that is nothing but a flat desert. Right. And everywhere, everywhere you look, there's water near the horizon and you just keep on <laughs> oh, keep man. on going. we're almost there guys wow man, don't that's... stop now look it's almost we're almost there <laughs> <laughs> and don't think that's not true that is exactly the perfect analogy for and look at obama that... look at what he does i mean these things that are so you're like wow why does it seem like something always pops up when like, there's never a dull moment when he's in power, I mean, why does this Cuban thing pop up? It's always there's always cr- there's a crisis, right? There's a crisis somewhere, the somewhere, crisis. somehow. If there's not one coming up, let's make something a crisis. I'll tell you what, woo! Cuba's on the books. We haven't screwed with them yet, right? So now we got the Cuban uh, new crisis, right? Um, part the, part of the assassinated th- cops, I believe, will be talked about pretty extensively this week. Which sure. We, we, which the prior segment we talked about. Yeah. Well, but, uh, Obama did call Raul before we leave Castro. Uh, he did call Raul this week, and they spoke as if that was the first time they talked. Right. Right. Well, they're saying it is. He they're probably, saying it's the first time in sixty-one years that a president has called Cuba officially. Officially. So they talked, and apparently uh, Obama did apologize to, to Raul and said, give your brother my best. And right after that, Obama listened to Raul speak for 30 uninterrupted minutes. Well, <laughs> that's because you can't interrupt somebody when they're speaking a different language and you have no idea what they're saying. Right. Well, and it, it has come out this week as well that Raul... In a statement said, thank you, United States, for reaching out to us. However, we are reaffirming, officially, our government is communist and always will be. Yeah, good luck with that. And that's where I, that's, that's where I can come in right now and say I still believe that the people who believe that this is the best thing to do are going to probably end up being proven right. And I'll tell you why. And we were, we were kind of getting in this in the beginning of the segment. They, there's, we haven't made any progress towards getting rid of communism in Cuba in the past 60 years. Right. It's like we're just waiting for the Castro family to die. And, and, or... Hoping that the people rise up. They don't even know they're oppressed anymore. So, you know, and when we talk to our mutual um, acquaintance, and we talk to her about these things, I mean, I mean, it's just so, it's mind-boggling how she's a, an American, born and raised in America, married a Cuban citizen or uh, subject, uh, whatever they call them over there. Uh, slave. Slave. Okay. And I don't um, know if they call them that, but... <laughs> but they are slave to the government. And so um, she had just been completely indoctrinated by this quasi-fight of the fight. It sh- she's calling for revolution still. Yeah, she just has no idea what she's talking about. She came out on Facebook this week and made the comment about this whole thing with uh, Cuba. Said, um, 
something to the fact of, I'm going to post this up here. And all of you who don't know anything and you're haters, don't you dare comment. I'm like, what? She's directing that at you. Well, yeah, I didn't see it, though. That My wife saw it and told me. <laughs> like, oh, you didn't get on to look at it? Nah, no, oh, I don't need to because I know what it is. For somebody to, to spew hate, if they're talking to you and they're spewing hate and anger, you need to run from that because it's no good. You know, there's a lot of cues that we throw out, a lot of key words, a lot of dog whistles that we try to throw out so that you can hear these things. To make sure that we're brainwashing them too. Right. right. <laughs> Just so that when we hear these things, we know what we're listening for and we hear them and we're trying to help you hear what we hear. Right. We got to we got to keep you from being uh tricked. Right. But before if you feel like, "Oh, well, Brian, I'm not hearing, I'm not hearing." Okay, before you get to the level of hearing it and recognizing it, being able it, to recognize it, yeah. First understand Feeling it, if it doesn't feel good, if it feels angry, it feels upsetting, they sound like they're mad. Well, and they'll make it feel good, though. And they won't, well, they don't want to listen to you. It's like a, it's like the salesman from Walla Walla, Washington. They'll never let you get a word in ed- edgewise because you need to be indoctrinated. Right. And they'll sell it. They'll tell you things. It, uh, I will tell you this. If what they're sa- saying sounds good and it's a communist, then he's lying. He's lying. It's as simple as that. Right. Absolutely. There's no question about it. So, uh, communism is alive and well and kicking. Um, And you don't want no part of it. No. Like I said, we already told you this. Communism never works. We told you exactly why. Because wealth... It's what well, it's all about envy. Do you remember that show? Uh, it's actually a series on. It's either the Discover Channel or um, the History Channel, and it was each. It was an hour long show, and there were seven of them, and it was about the seven deadly sins, and each episode was about a different sin. Wow! No, I didn't see that. Oh, yeah, it was man, great. Man, that would be awesome. And it was very thorough. Was it like the movie that Brad Pitt was in? Seven. Just like that. No, no. no. <laughs> uh, it was a very thorough uh, documentary about the history of the seven deadly sins, what they mean, how they were applied, all the... Very, very really? thorough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how it's been shown over the years. Were they referencing biblical oh, things? Oh, yeah. It, it, wow. All the different people throughout history, uh, different examples, and all this kind of stuff. Well, when it came to the, uh, the, de- the deadly sin of envy... Yes. They did a whole segment on communism. No! And they said... The History Channel? It was either the History Channel or Discovery Channel. Couldn't have been the Discovery Channel. They would allow either, that. Either or. Uh, they probably got sense of the woodshed. But they did <laughs> They did come out with... Oh. Now, here's the thing. The whole show on Envy wasn't all about communism. Right, right. But they had a massive chunk of the Envy episode about communism. And they called communism a a an attempt by human beings to legislate or or come up with a way of a governing system that that legislates envy out of humanity wow it's an attempt to get rid of envy to to make it illegal by removing all... By implementing full-blown... If you put in communism, wow. it was just... They didn't say it works. They right, didn't even... Right. In fact, they didn't even hint it that it works. Worked. Right. In fact, they kind of hinted that it's a miserable failure. <laughs> but they said that the envy of people wanting what others have, and they feel like they can't have, right. and so they're envious of those people, uh, they feel that... that um, that uh, communism was an attempt to eliminate it, the, eliminate the deadly sin of envy. That is amazing. Yeah, I've you never, see I've it. never, s- you got to see it. Thought of it from that angle, but you're right, though. Yeah, it's all all communism is, and here's how they do it: they get you all whipped up in an envious frenzy. Like, look at those people; they got what you don't have, and we don't have, and that's not fair. Right. It's not fair that they have so much, so much abundance. 
Right. And they did it by taking it from you and taking it from me. Right. And so we need to implement this new system where we all can be equal by all getting an equal amount of pay. To them, it's all about money. It's all about the thing that you use in order to purchase the items. Right. But in reality, and what they don't tell you and they don't want you to know, is that wealth comes from labor and that um, uh, the application of your, of your brain power and just work. Developing a skill that is marketable well, and we all even a skill is, even more. All a skill is Practice. is a tool to um, make your labor more efficient. Right. Right. It's a sim- whatever it might be. And so, uh, you know, also education could be used to teach others or to manage others who are laboring. And so your, your services will then become more valuable and all that kind of stuff. So, but anyway, money is just a piece of paper used to mark how much labor you did. Right. So you could, you could give people piles of these pieces of paper, but then you're just giving them incentive not to work and labor, and which w- then that, that's where the society collapses. Right. So when you have a commune and everybody, a doctor gets paid the exact same amount of money as a, uh, as a kid coming out with his first job bagging groceries at the grocery store. And the reason why they, that would happen is because it's not fair that that kid is, is not making as much money as you are. It's not fair. They should have the same amount of money that you're getting, although you've put more time and effort into your knowledge of your specific craft versus someone who doesn't have any knowledge and just start out in life. The problem is, once you start to divide the money up and make it equal all the way around, people with a lot of skill decide, hey, man, this ain't worth it. I'm not going to do this. Then you start to get the breakdown of education. You, you, get, the, you get unskilled doctors. Uh, your, your inventions? Inventions? Who would invent anything? Look at the Muslim world. What's the last thing they invented? Um... They I invented, think they invented the zero. Wasn't that the last thing they invented? Oh no! What they they <laughs> invented the brackets. Okay. That you use to install a 50 caliber M2 machine gun onto a um, a Toyota compact pickup truck. Correct. Which is very important. I, I mean, that's a. I mean, think of the the <laughs> quantum leap. <laughs> In societal evolution. Here's, that, my, here's my brain skipping a beat. <laughs> and this week there was an article that came out. A guy in Texas saw his pickup truck that he oh, sold. Oh, I saw that article. <laughs> what, don't He's, tell me his phone number's on the side of it. He was getting threats. Oh, yeah, because he was a plumber. His number was on the side of he the truck. He owned a plumbing company. Right. So he, the name and apparently, like if, if you're front, a capitalist in America, yeah. a small business owner, you go out and buy yourself your pickup truck. You want people to call you right. to hire you. Right. So your phone number is going to be on the side of your truck. So he sells the truck. Right. Or what, sell. However it was gone, whether it's stolen, he, sold, he, I don't know. I he, think he sold probably, it. I, I heard he sold it. Okay. And then it made its way to the Middle East. And, and it got outfitted with a couple of brackets. Yeah. <laughs> nice invention there. Wow. And now he's getting death threats. Yes. <laughs> From idiots in America, and by the way, if you are a conservative, patriotic, Tea Party member, whatever, uh, and you voted for Bush, voted for McCain, voted for Romney, whatever, you're, I don't care how far right you are, <laughs> if you think that this guy needs to have a phone call and threaten him 
for selling his truck to some terrorist. Insanity. You need to be slapped upside your head. Right. Anyway. Right. Just ridiculousness. Anyway, that, I didn't yeah, mean to skip that, that beat, is, but, Yeah, you skipped a beat, but that's so funny. But, that's I a mean, funny story. I mean, when you think about it, what have the Muslims done? Other than kill and mass murder each other. I mean, there's... There's this one this one today. Uh, they haven't even uh, made beheadings any more efficient. They're using rusty plastic blades. Well, it's small little little uh what was the knife that we what did we call a capel's knife, a little knife it's from the, the knife Halloween if you, store. If you stab somebody with it, retracts into the handle. Yes. Spring loaded <laughs> spring loaded rubber knife. Well, Lou Dobbs has a show on Fox Business News. And he was talking with uh, Lieutenant Colonel, Lieutenant Colonel Ralph we, Peters, a light Colonel, <laughs> yeah, a light <laughs> Colonel, <laughs> not a full bird Colonel, a light Colonel, light Colonel. So he has the uh, the the bronze leaf. Uh, it would be silver, a silver leaf, silver, silver leaf. leaf. Okay, and uh, they were speaking about the Taliban, the ISIS, that decided that they were going to go ahead and. Uh, just at, on a mass scale, kill 136 children in a school that happened to be Pakistani children. Taliban, as you say, that would be accorded respect and recognition by the U.S. government. This is madness. No. And these are the people Hillary Clinton wants to respect. Well, now, there is a split between, there's a difference between the Pakistani and Afghan Taliban. Uh, in terms of their targets, and, and, but their techniques and their goals are fundamentally the same. Violent jihad in the service of Allah. And again, these are also the, the, these are the enemies that Hillary Clinton wants us to respect. Remember empathize that as well. With. Empathize with. Yeah, empathize. Oh, yeah, empathy. I feel it. I feel I it. I wonder if it. she's empathizing yeah. today with the Taliban uh, and their massacre of children. I wonder. Yeah. Well, just just don't deprive them of sleep, and we're all okay. Now, it really, Lou, this is such a tragic situation, where the the Taliban can do this, and the we, the le, the left in the we, in the West doesn't really react this, to it because they don't know what to do. And hey, might just to add on this, I think the Taliban made a very big mistake in doing this today, because for the first time, they really hit home in the families of the guys who do have power in Pakistan, the military. And I think there's going to be some dead Taliban after this is all over. Yeah. Yeah, they're apparently some of the children were Pakistani military personnel. I mean, they were kids of some of the military and higher-ups. Um, but this he, is, this is, he said he thinks they made a mistake. I know. But I'm like, come on, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? This might have been a tactically good move. What, is that, I mean, is that what the uh, alternative is? I, I, is somebody going to jump on to that channel and say, well, I disagree. <laughs> I what? think that this was brilliant. Yeah, it was, it brilliant was an idea. tactics. It was played wow. well. Well played. Play, yeah. Oh, you just killed my kids. Well played. Well played. Well yeah. played. No, I think it was being extremely sarcastic. No, I don't think it was sarcasm. I think that he was just... Hey, they called me on as an expert. <laughs> I better give them my expert opinion. Well, uh, Lou, I believe that this was probably a mistake on their part. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that, Captain Obvious. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, anyway. Um, yeah. And so. then we, we have uh, Obama saying what Obama says. We, we found this amazing. Um, the problem is, is that, um, you know, I'm... The President of the United States, I'm not uh, uh, the Emperor of the United States. Now, this is interesting. Um, I did not pick up on what he really said there. For Kids, Brian. did you hear that? Did you hear that, Brian children? had to tell me, think about what he just said there. He said, the problem is that, you know, I'm not the Emperor. No, 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 the problem is I'm not the President. Or, I am the President. Uh, but that's not, the problem. The problem is... I am the president and, and not, not the emperor. And so so I it wasn't until Brian made me stop and listen to that like very carefully that I realized that what he's saying is, is that the solution is that he should be the emperor. Then every, all our problems would be solved. Right. Listen to that again just real quick. The problem is is that 
Um, you know, I'm the president of the United States. I'm not uh, uh, the emperor of the United States. Now, you could make the argument that he had stopped his train of thought and restarted his train of thought on a different sentence. However, I still will argue that even if that be the case, still a Freudian slip. That was a Freudian slip. He's he's literally saying that it's a problem that he's not the emperor, and this would all be solved and fixed, and everybody would be happy when he can be emperor right. and just wave his magic wand of his voice and, he and was, cause laws to happen. Right. And he was saying this in direct response to sign, oh, uh, signing of uh, the immigration reform, whatever he's going to call it, and allow illegal people to circumvent the law and be here legally. Um, businesses will be paid up to $6,000 per non-citizen they hire. That's part of what he signed. Which he's really taken away jobs from American citizens. A, a Cincinnati circuit court has ruled that Obama uh, overstretched, overstretched about, and, and it is illegal what he has done with his executive oh, order. Oh, no. He, he couldn't have done something illegal. Right. It's a violation of the Constitution, which it is. And... This thing that he's trying to do with Cuba is also illegal. He can't do any of this. He has to get Congress on board, and everybody's well, out the line. And I've said this before. I'm not sure if I said it on this show, but I've said it time and time again over the years, that uh, law is just words on a paper. Right, if there's nobody to enforce it. If nobody stands up and says, hey, you can't break that law, then guess what? I mean, it's just like uh, speeding. Right. If the cop isn't there to stop you from speeding, you could just go whatever s- speed you wanted to until the car in front of you was you were going to hit it. You know, I mean, right. uh, assuming that there's open road, you could go as fast as you want until somebody actually enforces that law. Did you s- I think you gave me this example. You said to me, and folks, just let's put on your imaginary hat right now. Imaginary hat or imagination hat? Your imagination hat. That's also imaginary. imaginary. Okay, I got it. Correct. And imagine we live in exactly the same world we live in today. Nothing has changed except one single thing. The invention of the automobile had never happened. Okay. Imagine it wasn't there and it never happened. And today... We had an idea to invent it. Okay, okay. And we proposed this invention to the government, and we told the government that uh, we need to lay some roads, put pavement down, and then take some paint and paint a a, a yellow line down the middle of this uh, blacktop or concrete road. Okay. And the cars that we invented will then go in opposite directions because one wants to go one way and one wants to go the other way. And they'll be traveling at a high rate of speed, maybe 60, 70, 80 miles an hour. Okay. All divided by a yellow piece of paint on on the the road. On the pavement. On the pavement. Right. Do you even think for one second that would be allowed? They would never... This would never fly. Uh, They would... They would say, do you, you're not, do you know how dangerous that is? <laughs> I mean, that's almost like I, like having skyscrapers without windows and just say, just don't step off that ledge there. Right. Because <laughs> right. I'm talking about the windows that go all the way to the floor. Right. Imagine if uh, the glass wasn't invented and, right. and for whatever reason you didn't have a wall on the outside and you're in a skyscraper. And just say, hey, whatever you do, just don't step off that ledge. Yeah, just don't go that way. Yeah, don't back out off of it or nope, anything. Nope, nope, nope. Right, and so, and of course, uh, I don't think it would ever fly. But these days, you know. The regulations, the hoops, the, I mean. Oh, the, they would make, you know what they would do? Every single road in all of America would have five-foot-high walls on, not only down the center, but on both sides of the yeah. road. 
I wouldn't want you to run off the road. There would be wheels on the sides of the cars right. to bounce off the walls as right. you went down. Well, and, and, and this this is in L.A., uh, the busiest, one of the busiest freeways is the 710 freeway that ends up and dumps out at the Los Angeles um, International uh, um, Port. Yeah, the Port of Los Angeles is down in Long Beach. And so you have these, I mean, it's just miles of tractor trailers. And they're not allowed in the fast lane. But there's miles of tractor trailers going either way to the port, going in and coming out. Well, when one of those tractor trailers winds up uh, tangling with a car or another truck, there's a big, massive wreck. And they have these these concrete, uh, you know, the concrete barriers. So maybe... Four foot high. The small ones. Not yeah. the, not the real big ones. They're about three and a half, three. three yeah. Foot. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Well, they would jump them. They would go up and over them and, and onto the oncoming traffic. Ooh, yeah, that's not good. And I've never seen this anywhere in any other city. Except for L.A. Except for L.A. And, and I'm get over the wall. And I'm wondering... Is it because of the concrete barriers that these things are ramping it? Are they designed airborne? differently? I mean, they could be designed differently. Well, they decided to go ahead and remove them all and put in uh, eight foot oh gee concrete barriers. Okay, and at the top of the concrete barriers, there's these plastic electric little... fence. Yeah, <laughs> it's so, and it's just not just one barrier. There's a big, giant gap, and then they put another one on the other side. Just in case it gets over the eight-foot-high wall, it won't get over both of them. Right, because then you now have, like, a 20-foot span of emptiness. The DMZ, if you will. No, no, it's, it's uh, what's the name? There was a space like that where the, for the Berlin Wall. I think it was No Man's Land or something like that. Well, I mean, it would be the demilitarized zone, but yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 there was a name for it. It was wow. back, back in the Cold War, or whatever, before the Berlin Wall fell. As the uh, wall um, evolved, they needed to try harder and harder to keep people from jumping it. Right. So it went from one wall to a wall and a large space that was covered very heavily with machine gun towers. Right. And enough space, it was like 20 feet, yeah. enough space so that if you did try to make a run for it, there was no way to make it to the other side before the guy with the machine gun would be able to get you. I mean, they just rain down steel bullets on you. It'd just be well, all over lead. lead bullets on you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so there's this empty space, and it's just, I, I don't I don't get it. I don't get it. I mean, maybe, it, maybe that's the way it works, but I, I know you folks are listening right now. Have you ever seen such a thing? I never seen that. I never seen that such a nuts. thing. But that that's just in response to the way things are today. Imagine if you were going to invent all of this stuff today. Wow. The way the, the government works, it would just never they, happen. Well, first off, they never allow two vehicles going in opposite direction on the same road. No way. No. They way. would have separate roads and if there were multiple lanes they would probably be separated by a physical barrier yes you can't what you're gonna let them switch lanes at will and i guarantee you without a shadow of a doubt that there would be a regulation that every engine has a very strict regulator on it to keep you below a certain speed oh absolutely guarantee you and how would they do that they would call up a company called chrysler and they would <laughs> <laughs> and they would do what? They would say, make us a motor. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. You're talking about the life of the engine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Like the life of the body, too. Yeah. You've got to bathe that thing in salt water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Before man. the car is painted, it must first go through a salt bath. Saline solution. solution. <laughs> <laughs> to get it crystal clean. And with crystals of salt attached No, it's to actually it. seawater. <laughs> oh, man. And if there is seaweed left on it, you just leave it there. It's part of the just texture. Paint over it's it. texture. It's textured. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What was oh. the other thing that happened this week? Freaking Sony. Oh, did we have? 
That uh, was what dominated the news this week. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to give you guys what you really need. And we're going we're gonna to skim over and just tell you about the Sony thing, I believe, because the real nuts and bolts are the media killed cops this week. Right, media killed cops. Which we covered that in the first segment. And um, the, the Cuba thing. Because we need to always talk about communism. Because we need to educate. That's the most. That's the biggest reason we do this show. Because we are a nation full of thirty and unders who are totally sold on communism, thanks to the propaganda that they grew up in in the public school system. Right. Absolutely. And and to think and when some people when, when some people when people make fun of us or say, "Oh, communism! Oh, you're crazy!" No, no. No, oh my friend. We are the wise ones. You're trying to minimize the fact that it is real. It is so real. Vladimir Putin just sent an emissary to Cuba to talk to Castro and colluding. They've been colluding together forever. Communists do what communists do. And the emissary said, uh, hey, uh, I know America's trying to make up with you, but uh, don't trust them. And by the way, the communists running. Uh, no, there's communists running Russia, okay? Because these are former KGB people. Oh yeah, yeah. And they would no- love nothing more than for uh, Russia to go back to full blown communism. But he- here's the moral of the story: they are not communists. They they do not have a communist society. They used to. It was called the Soviet Union. The and USSR. Guess, and guess why they're not communists anymore? Hold on. I. I'm, Carrie, tell me. I don't... Why? What happened? Because the whole thing collapsed. And why did it collapse? Because communism doesn't work. Okay. Okay. I'll put that in my memory bank. Please Make sure I do put not that forget that. in your hard drive. Right. And your solid state memory. <laughs> because it needs solid to state. be a permanent part of your memory. So it's, anyway. it's got to be etched in there to where it cannot go anywhere. You need a monolith. Yes. <laughs> with a big stone monolith. Oh. Communism doesn't work, right. and it won't work because you think you're smarter than those that came before you. Right. So. Just FYI. Right. Okay. Why is everyone so f***ing stupid? Why aren't more people intelligent like me? I'm... So lonely, so lonely, <laughs> so lonely and sad, real alone. Sad, real ro- alone. <laughs> what? The, uh. For those of you who love comedy, that was a clip of Kim Jong Un's father, Kim Jong Il. Not really him, though. Well, uh, I don't know. You it could have been. been. It looked like him from the movie. Right, but it, but it wasn't even a human in the movie. It was a puppet. Right, he was a puppet. Team America, world police, and that was a sound clip of what happens when you are a brutal, evil dictator. So you they portrayed become... him as a lonely, or a ronery, ronery person. person. Because everybody around him is so boop, stupid. At least that's what they think. If you're if if you are supreme dear leader to everybody and they treat you the way that North Koreans treat Kim Jong il, Kim Jong un. Right. Um I could see how eventually you get what we call a superiority complex. Oh, we have one of those in America right now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But not as much, because there are critics in America. Yeah. Namely, Carrie and Brian Smith. Yes, here on Smith Radio. Right. But now in Korea, North Korea, right. they, uh, he will, I mean, nowadays probably doesn't have that problem as much, but in the beginning of communism, you have to murder all your critics. Well, after, after Kim Jong-il died, uh, he, he, his son, in his early 20s, Kim Jong-un, Took over. Now he's got to have a superiority complex. Well, his uncle, which is his his father's brother, his uncle 
apparently um, had mixed words with him mm. and wound up dead. He ended up getting assassinated by his own nephew. Yeah. So Kim Jong-un killed his uncle. He also killed some other family members as well. He's killed other people of parliament. Oh, this was a story that went down maybe a month or so, maybe two months ago, and nobody reported about it. Oh, I, can't, I completely forgot about it. North Korea. Dictatorship. Just a horrible Communist environment. Communist Horrible environment to live in. And uh, the government had contracted a company to build a, 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 like a skyscraper, but it was an ac- apartment complex. Like a tall apartment complex skyscraper. And you can look at pictures of these things. Right. And they They're were terrible. They look like cockroach motels or something. Well, they were building a brand new one okay. for government officials and other people of the working for the government directly to live in with their families. If you work in a communist country, that's called working for the government. Uh huh. There is no such thing. If you like, literally, if you're a baker, you are baking in a government mm-hmm. run and own bakery. Right. That's how. A communist country is and works. But anyway, go ahead. So uh, the contractors were building this building. Uh, and they were... I, you call them contractors. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> well, the problem was is that they, they they complained about being underpaid. They what? didn't have enough enough money for the for specific uh, materials. Might have cut some, some cost here and there. Oh. And they were... And according to Kim, they were behind schedule. And they said they we were not finished yet, and uh, Kim Jong Un said no. I'm gonna have my people move in. He's like the building's not done. They're moving in. You better get we it. We don't done. need drywall. So uh, these government officials started moving in, and started loading up the building, and the building collapsed. Uh oh. Killed uh, a couple of hundred people. And they said Kim Jong Un wept. <laughs> <laughs> they said he wept. And after he was done weeping, can you guess what he did? Rounded up the contractors. Of course he did. And had them killed. Because that's how you punish. And it you know, it's interesting. This conversation just kind of reminded me of what we talked about earlier about how in capitalism you work for your money. Right. And in communism you get your money and then they just expect you to work. In a communist <laughs> country, that, that's the thing. Oh, so the bad. incentive in a capitalist country is if you work, you get money. If you work hard, you can get a lot of money. Right. If you don't work, you could possibly even starve. Right. Well, that was the motivating factor for the pilgrims was to work hard. Right, but... To not die. But one thing I didn't say was that, okay, you get this money, there's no incentive to work, I missed out the key point. So in order to make a communist country work, you have to be forced at a gunpoint to work because there, the money is no incentive. Oh, and if you've seen these pictures, you got to friend us on Facebook at Smith Radio. There was a picture that went viral. Apparently Kim Jong-un uh, was visiting a factory. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the slideshow. And he was... He was Staring at what looked like a machine that was, that was squirting out dough, like maybe even um, uh, like American cheese. Which funny American cheese, <laughs> but uh. and so Kim Jong Un is looking at this machine. It, it real interest. He's leaning into it to get a close look at it, and he's smiling. And apparently, the worker who looked like he was 190 years old, but really he was 30. Uh, <laughs> Malner starved. And Kim's Kim is huge. He's a fat. He kind of looks a little bit like uh, Psy from Gangnam Style. Yes, he's definitely In a doughboy. That boy. might be him. That <laughs> might be. He's definitely a doughboy. And so the, the guy, the worker, is in these military fatigues, if you will, like a green outfit. Just really might have even been his security guard. But re- regardless, he was locked up. At attention. Position of attention, yeah. No eye contact whatsoever. Thousand yard stare. Right. And there was no there was no emotions whatsoever on his face. He was probably 
deathly afraid. At all times, of course. That why would Kim be here? Oh my gosh. If I do anything wrong, it's firing squad. Right. Or gulag. Right. Right. Flat out. That's what they got to do. Either gulag or firing squad. And um, so you go to work every day. Now the lie is that you work for the good of your country. Right. I love my country, therefore I'll work. And I'll work hard so that I can live in a great country. Which that sounds all great and patriotic. Right. But it's just human nature. Eventually, you're going to start thinking... Well, somebody else will pick up the slack if I slack. Well, I'm or you start up. thinking, what am I doing all this for? What is all this for? What's yeah, my what purpose? My purpose on Earth. Did you ever see that black and white video of the, um, I believe he's a priest, like a Catholic priest, from the 50s, talking about what communism is. He's like a professor at some university. Did you send it to me? I, yeah, I did. I said, post it on our website. I was meaning to do that. Did you watch it? I've been meaning to do that. I've been meaning <laughs> to do that. <laughs> In that show, he points out that while the communists believe, I mean, you know, th- there's um, evolution and, and uh, evolution of, ma- of uh, mammals and right. plants and all that. Well, they believe that man is going to evolve into a, uh, when I mean man, I mean all men, all human beings will tr- will evolve into this great being and we'll all be like cells of a larger entity. Oh for shit's sake. And so we have to all work to get this thing going. Oh my goodness. And that this is an inevitable thing. And what they believe is is if they put a cattle prod in it that will speed up to this utopia. Wow. You got to watch all it. The, you you got to watch this, it. What this all boils down to? Godless. Oh yeah, it's and, and Ann Coulter wrote a book called Godless, the Left, and how they have there is no. And I didn't read that book, and I don't know whether or not she ever just flat out said, "Look, these people are communists," but that's what she's referring to. Oh no, absolutely. In the book, she does refer to them the, as communi- communists. Right. She used the c word. Well, the co- communism. Not that c word, but the other one. Well, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is there it, well communism becomes your religion I was watching a, a documentary where they snuck in a camera crew into North Korea that's what I saw I yes. saw that one yeah and uh, they were they would go into these huts and these little tiny or concrete clo- uh, sarcophagus cells, cells yeah <laughs> that's what they because they would live in apartments just like the one that collapsed right, right. concrete floors concrete walls if That's you look it. at it from the outside, kind of prison-like. Right, right. Well, it would be like as if you were driving through, um, you know, government housing. Yeah. I mean, that's what it is, government housing. But you know how in America, when they're building a building, you have the big uh, skeleton made out of the uh, iron I-beams and all that kind of stuff. And then you have big p- concrete pillars, and it's all And gray. inside those concrete pillars, you have a web of, of rebarb and all kinds of... Steel poles all wrapped up together, and then right. they pour the concrete in. Right, right. but then right. after all that, they put the, on the facade of the. It could be fake bricks, it could be real bricks, uh, uh, paint, whatever uh, walls, and it, it's real ornate and beautiful, and everything looks pretty. It's enticing. You'd want to live there. In North Korea, they stop at the concrete. They don't even paint it. No, you're looking at a gray, flat concrete wall with holes uh, like a uh, square or rectangular holes some of them they don't even look like glass no and the the walls on the inside of the house were the floors Just concrete concrete floors concrete wall all gray not painted they don't even put drywall up no there was oh a woman goodness. that they that they went into to interview and she lived in a closet she was an older older lady well we refer to it as a closet right it was <laughs> very very small but that was her entire apartment and she uh, it lived her entire life under Kim Jong Il, the the father, and um, he was and is the only picture she had on the wall was him. There were no other pictures on the wall. Just and she may him. have a large family. Uh, it's very possible, but she no pictures of anybody but him. Right, and she worshipped him as the Messiah, as God like, and when he died. 
Oh my! I I watched the video. Thousands of people cried. I watched the video of the people on the steps of the government buildings, and they're they're wailing and throwing their bodies, and just wailing and screaming. And I well, just, they they do love him. You know, evil people sometimes have children. And Genghis Khan apparently had lots of thousands, hundreds of thousands. Of <laughs> no, I'm just saying actual children. Right. I'm talking about children that maybe they even raised. And these children, uh, and I'm not talking about the estranged children. I'm talking about, uh, e- I'm just talking about your your average run of the mill evil person has a child, raises them. A lot of these children love their fathers, just like the people in Korea love their dear leader but they don't know they have no idea no idea what's going on uh, as far as the oppression or what it means to be free be able to make your own decisions right and well it's all by design all the media all the tv all the radio everything that you are um that you come in contact with in your world is of the government censored by the government for the government in order to keep you the, the the people in your place of worship. I mean, it was, and it's theoretically possible that this woman was very smart, very keen, and knew that whatever was being videotaped, even if they swore, "Oh, don't worry, nobody's ever going to see this uh, in your country," that she knew that Kim Kim Jong Il was going to eventually see it through some indirect source, and then that would land her in a gulag. Therefore, she put on the act. But but in real it's life, possible. she hates her situation and wants out of there. But, uh, th- that is theoretically possible, I but I believe possible. that it's more the, likely that she really does love him. The emotions that these people uh, displayed, uh, because they couldn't have the cameras in public view, so they'd, they'd go undercover you know, cameras in public, the, the the display of worship for this man was, I don't even think people would, I don't, would people react it. that way to Jesus? They will react that way to Obama, but that's mainly because they are also communists. Because, I mean, I mean, I worship Jesus and I, I don't, I just, I don't know, I, I don't. How do you, but Jesus was God, right? But how? So they're reacting because, oh, I just got it. They're reacting that way because they're having an identity crisis now, com- being confronted with the fact that their dear mortal leader is it not more? He's dead, right? So now they got. Kim he was supposed to be God, and he's not. Now they're having a crisis. Amongst well, themselves. and it's not going to be too much of a crisis because once they find out that anybody who starts questioning Kim Jong Un will be sent away and never seen again, right. or maybe even publicly executed, right? Oh, they'll, they'll get in line. They'll get in line real quick. Well, and apparently Obama is going to have to get in line because Obama um, made some comments about Uh-oh. Kim and uh, Sony Pictures, and apparently, yeah, we didn't even tell the people listening. Why we're talking about Korea? No. Okay. Well, uh, Let me give you a little background. Sony real quickly. Pictures. I don't know how long you, we got until this broadcast per, is over. But Sony Pictures produced a movie, a comedy movie, um, w- where depicting the pict- execution or well, assassination, yeah, assassination. Right. Assassination. Well, they they take two journalists in the movie. One is Seth Rogen, Rogen yeah. and I don't know the other guy, but it's a comedy thing. So the FBI takes these two journalists in. And trains them uh, to go and kill Kim Jong Un. Right. And it's supposed to be a comedy. Uh, it's called the. I think it's called the interrogation or the, interrogation. Yeah. And apparently, at the end of the movie, not only do they succeed in, or somebody succeeds in assassinating him, but it's actually shown because now that clip is all over the internet. Right. Talk about viral video. That one might get a billion. Get I don't know. Sick with it. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> There's a uh, set of hackers that went to town and started from North Korea. Or well, so we believe. So we believe. Um, and they went to town and hacked Sony Studios. Originally, a couple of weeks ago, 
the hacking started to uh, produce emails of senior executives, the COO of Sony, uh, conversing with other, through email, conversing with other uh, high-level executives about Obama. And apparently, there was uh, they had um, <coughs> tickets to go to a meal where Obama was going to give a speech. And one of the emails was, oh, you're going to go to that dreaded thing? And he's like, yeah, LOL, what a drag to have to listen to this again. And then uh, uh, she said, well, what kind of movies do you think he'd, he'd watch? And, uh, you know, one was, he threw out three or four different movies, but they were all chick flicks and maybe black chick flick movies. And you just, anyone knows like that. And so it started to come out that, oh, they're racist. Uh-oh. Making fun of Obama. Why's it got to be a black movie? Right. Yeah, that kind of racism. So then, uh, apparently somebody, well, FBI started getting involved here this week about finding out who these hackers are that's bringing Sony Studios to their knees. Apparently, right. And um, the the FBI is accusing Kim Jong-un and North Korea. Right, and they say they're 99.999 or something like that percent sure that the hacks uh, came from Korea. So that's why Korea's been in the news. Well, Kim Jong-un has come out. And he says, this is uh, out of the Daily Mail. It's a good uh, website. I love this website. Dailymail.uk.co.uk. So this is UK Daily Mail, mm-hmm. which is interesting because it gives you a different take on on news, not saying right. that they're, they're not in good or bad. step with American media, right? Which is it because American media, you will see when the New York Times comes out with uh, whatever they're saying for the day, the rest of the media and the talking heads will say the exact same thing. It's interesting. I I never knew that until Rush brought that up, but that is really sick. The All, montage, yeah, of yeah. the same. Like yeah, nobody yeah. could invent the words they use. Well, all at the same time. Right. What happens is the New York Times comes out in the morning. All of the media people, national news networks, whatever, all over the country read their New York Times. And then they create their news based on what was covered in the New York Times. Right. That This is a widespread, decades-old thing that's been Maybe happening. Maybe even a century. Maybe even a, uh, the last century. All the news originates from the New York Times. Right. And if you talk to people who live in New York, in their minds... That is the world. That is. There is oh, nothing yeah. outside of us. Yeah. And if you, go to, if you go to Hollywood, West Hollywood, that is. I'm sorry. West Hollywood, that is. <laughs> they are in the only the, part of the world of a world. The that's center, it. The center of the world. Right. So UK, yeah, they come out with some. We stuff. are the tension of the world. So they came out with this article: North Korea threatens to blow up the White House after claiming to find clear evidence that the government was behind the controversial Sony film. And I don't blame them for getting really, really ballsy with statements like this. The film's called the Interview, by the way. Yeah, that's what we said. Did yeah. I say that? Yeah, we said okay. the Interview. Um. I don't blame them for getting ballsy uh, by just set, threatening to blow up the White House. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying that North Korea will or even come close to even attempting to blow up the White House, because the nature of terrorism is that you make the threat, and if if you're credible, then you terrorize people. Right. Because they hear your threat and they go, "Oh my God!" And let me tell you something. The entire West Coast, specifically Hollywood, is completely terrorized by by uh, North Korea right now. Yeah, completely terrorized. What I mean, what what did Sony Studios do? Well, it's well, not actually, just them. Actually, the Sony only one is that's claiming. not been terrorized is George Clooney. Ironically, uh, the leftist himself. He's uh, the only one that came out and said, "You know what? This is some crap, and I think everybody should take a stand." So who's standing up with me? And it was nothing crickets. but the loudest crickets you've ever heard crickets. in your life. Crickets over loudspeakers. It's funny you bring up Clooney's name. Because the hacks revealed emails 
to the COO, the senior executive of Sony's, involving George Clooney. Oh, I did not know that. Well, I do know that when questioned, other big actors in Hollywood were like, this is, this is seriously scary. This might be the scariest thing I've ever experienced in my life. Apparently, Clooney made a movie that bombed. 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 And uh, he he was, I mean, just a sniveling uh, rag of, of tears emailing the the president of Sony Pictures, this female, about how sorry he is, and they've got to do something to uh, to keep the critics uh, away from this movie. He can't tell you. I've been up, a uh, uh, direct quote, I've been up for 30 hours. I can't take this anymore. And then she writes back to him, uh, it's okay, don't worry, we'll get, we'll make money. We'll make money. And then he writes back, I'm so sorry. I will never disappoint you guys like this again. It's just on and on. Oh, my gosh. Like, that doesn't sound like something Clooney would write. No. and then sure it wasn't his publicist. <laughs> sure it well, then, and apparently there's also some emails out that uh, where they're talking about Angelina Jolie being absolutely crazy. Of course she is. She used to drink uh, her own urine. No, well, maybe, but the Madonna blood. Madonna did, by the way. The blood of uh, Billy Bob Thornton. What? You didn't hear about that? I thought that was a joke. And she also had sex with her brother. Well? Yikes. No, she, her, remember her, uh, Angelina Jolie. Her father, John and, Voight. Yeah, I, I'm sure he's a little bit disappointed. But <laughs> uh, her and Billy Bob Thornton used to be married or they were dating or something together and they used to uh wear vials of each other's blood and when questioned about it they talked about how they drank each other's blood okay yeah it's kind of weird for the purpose of and then he would watch her and her brother oh you mean not just one time you mean on a regular basis oh this is like what they did yeah. What? Yeah, it's pretty bad. Stepbrother? Half brother? Uh eh, full blood, I think. I don't know. We we'll have to ask John Voight. Ask good old Johnny Boy. What? The guy with the purdy mouth. The purdy mouth. <laughs> He's what? got a purdy mouth. Apparently, uh then there's no there's no doubt in my mind that she's a loony. Fuck. Yeah, when you said that she's crazy, I was like, uh, so is there any news here? <laughs> 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 well, breaking news to me. Yikes! So this is all as a result of hacking uh, emails. I just It's just really weird. All these uh, actors and stuff are just freaking out about this hacking. It's like, why don't you guys stand up for yourselves? Do you have the audio of that guy? I don't. Ah! That guy, he said... Uh, we really stood up for ourselves. We're, we're oh, it was, this, it was a spokesman for <laughs> Sony Studios. Yeah, he was terrible. We did everything. We, but we we're did. not backing down. That's what right. he said. That's what he said. We, we didn't. He said we didn't back down. You folded like the cheapest 1972 lawn chair. Yeah, man. Under the weight of an elephant. Oh, <laughs> you not only did oh. you fold, but you buckled. Oh, buckled, folded, everything. Oh, my gosh. That was... It's just sad. Just, It's really sad to see those guys look so pathetic. But anyway. So that's what happened with the uh, hacking. You have any more to say about that? Uh, oh, I've got it's the clip. It's been huge <laughs> news. They're I've, calling it terrorism and all that kind of stuff. What's so funny? Well... Uh, An attack on America. Well, Obama... I mean, what you, what's your take on that? On Because there's there's... As far as I'm concerned, there's different camps here. Well, Obama said that this is not an act of war. He said it's not. Correct. This is not an act of war. This is not an act of terrorism. This is... Um, vandalism. Vandalism. Yeah. So here's my take. Uh, we're, we're all about definitions here at Smith Radio. And Words so, mean things. So I said, does... That's an interesting point. Is this an act of war or not? So I started thinking, what is the definition? 
And I just concocted this up. I didn't look up in any kind of military books or even the dictionary. But if a if if a, an attack comes from a person, it could be an assault. If it's uh, damage to property by a person or a private group or whatever, I would call that vandalism. If it is if it is va if it's a damage to property or an assault that's by the leader of a country or a government of some sort. It's government sanctioned. It was concocted by go government. It was ordered by the leader of the government or by whoever's running the government. I mean, you got to call that an act of war. Yeah. Simple yeah. Simple as that. Oh, I would absolutely. I mean, because. So, yeah, it's an act of war. Is otherwise, it something we should take seriously? I don't know. Otherwise, it would be uh, like an international incident. But that would not be a government to another go to another right. Country. Like, like that would like, be a like if Sony Studios screwed with a, a, another company in, in Korea. another in Korea. Yeah, and it was could, a company versus a company. Yeah, and and it caused it. It ended up causing an, a government response. Right now, you have what we call an international incident. Correct, but it's not an act of war because that that. Vandalism, damage, whatever you want to call it, didn't come from the government. So when the government does it, then that would be an act of war. So yeah, it's an act of war. Does it mean that we should go to war with Korea? No. 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 Does it? Should we call it terrorism? You know, I wasn't going to, but looking at the the absolute fear in the voices and on the faces oh, yes. of the actors and actresses. Oh, it's abs except for one show who is not Sony Pictures over the weekend and this is going to be everywhere. Uh Saturday Night Live is trying to stay relevant. Oh yeah. I think they're trying to stay relevant by hitting notes on big things that pop up. So apparently, Doctor Evil made an appearance. Oh, okay. Do we have a sound clip? Hello, I'm Doctor Evil. <laughs> I preempted this program because I'm furious that North Korea and Sony Pictures have both given evil organizations a bad name. But back to the hackers. First of all, the name. When you guys were sitting around and pitching it, was one guy like, I've got an idea, let's call ourselves the Guardians of Peace, or the GOP. <laughs> Hello! Way to go, a-holes! There's already a GOP, and they're already an evil organization. <laughs> Gee, thanks for that bit of propaganda, Mike. That's just pure. That that's just uh, the left doing their thing, uh, making sure that they drop those little gems all over the low information idiots out there. Um, when I I think sometimes, what's it going to take for these people to wake up and realize they're being bamboozled? And, uh, well, I got the answer to that. They always do. And why Why does it keep growing? Because, as Barnum and Bailey would say, there's so a sucker born every, every minute. minute. Yep. We, were, we were the low information voters. Right. I don't know about Brian. I'm not going to speak on his behalf. I was a, a complete bleeding heart liberal idiot, uh, naive and misinformed I and will, propagandized. Right. I will say that I, I never ever classified myself as a liberal or a democrat ever however i didn't either but a conservative would right because I, they knew i had somebody tell me that before they were like oh god are you one of those uh bleeding heart liberals and i never heard of that before right. and so i said no but looking back on it yeah. he was a very well educated wise person who saw that I was a bleeding heart liberal and called me out on it and I was too stupid to even know what it was. Right. And my my number one problem I had to overcome. Number one problem was the fact that um that I was a victim in my mind. 
in my mind, I was a victim well, the, of probably, the world. Yeah, you were you were probably taught that, and you didn't realize it. Right. It's the the that's what propaganda is. Propaganda is when you hear something that sounds like information, and you are like, "Wow, I didn't know that." And right. you know that, and it moves you in some way. But that information that you just took was a very carefully hidden lie. Right. That's c- propaganda. Right. There you go. Absolutely. So if you and and I I I work with people like this that say uh, when we were talking about um, Dre Beats and how he got six hundred and fifty million dollars in one year, mm-hmm. and even f- other folks, I mean that are black people, they still hated and was angry at the fact that Dre received that kind of money. Nobody needs that kind of money. That, that was the response that was out of their mouth. Uh, another response was uh, the, the owner of the company, extremely wealthy, multi multi multi-millionaire, and the words out of their mouth were, they could afford to give every single employee a hundred thousand dollars. If you knew the kind of expenses, it, that's and the I'm point. not saying that after all of his expenses, he ends up with thirty thousand a year. Right, but I'm the, not saying that. No, but his hard work, tenacity, and risk is worth whatever he's making. Now, you may think you're worth more. And if you believe you're worth more, then go out and get that. Negotiate that. Leadership is very valuable. Yes. And for somebody to put together a company that not only just employs people, but tells them what to do, how to do it, uh, in order to create the product or service and to get them to do it correctly and and also and doing all this you're serving a customer that's happy with the product or service i mean it takes a lot of uh skill a lot of intelligence a lot of training right. and a lot of a lot of trial and error and failure and and uh and a lot of those failures probably set those people way far back and so there's a lot of risk involved and at the end of the day they ended up persevering and so they earned all that. This company is now 50 years old. 50. He's been at this for 50 straight years. And it, only in the last 15 years, maybe 10, has the company grown from uh, 25 employees to 200. Right. And at some point. He was probably him and his uh, brother in the basement or something like that. Right. Well, they did. They started out in his garage. It was him, two other guys, working together for years and years and years. Long time. Just and toiling it, away. Forever. It was only five to ten guys. When forever. I, when I first started my business, I could only do it because I was married to somebody who had a full-time job and could scrape together enough to put food on the table. If I had to do this while supporting a family from day one, right. there's no way. And I think that's another thing that the, the 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 education system, the liberal system does to children is they stifle your dreams of one day becoming wealthy and the way you do that is start your own business and you do that in your 20s when you don't have children and you're not married yeah, and you, you have the early. ability to take massive amounts of risk. Lots of risk. Uh, plus you have the energy to uh, do stuff like, uh, here's a good example. You can work seven days a week. Well, seven days a week, but also uh, as much as 18 hours a day. Yeah. Which, you know, when I was, when I was 16, 17, 18, if somebody says, dude, we got to put in, we got to put in about 80 to 90 hours this week. I probably would have felt Unless I was doing what I loved, I would have been like, Ugh. and that's the thing about when you own your own business. You're doing what you love. Right. Or at least you should be. And I had a construction business out in L.A., and I was working. The wife will t- t- confirm this. There was no question about it. Sun up to sun down. You know, 12, 14 hours a day. These people that complain about um, what kind of money these business owners are making would never work those kind of hours. Uh, that was another statistic they threw out that the uh, the number one reason why small startup businesses fail is because they don't put the time in. Ah, they they start go. the business thinking they're going to punch the clock. 
and it's going to be 40 hours. Interesting. It is not. It is your, it becomes your life. Morning, noon, and night. You sleep it, you eat it, you drink it, you obsess about it. Yeah, and in you my case. You dream about it. In my case, I may be actually doing um, a job for eight to ten hours a day, but then guess what I'm doing after that? Sales. Yeah, more stuff. You gotta go and meet with customers during the to- during the that off time. When when most people are clocking out and going home and hanging out with their family, I'm transferring from labor to sales. Right. So that's how that works. No, absolutely. And that it was a big thing that I had to do as well. I mean, even when we were sitting in church on Sunday, I'm looking at the rafters and I'm looking at the structure and I'm thinking, how would I have done this differently? And my mind's wandering. And then I'm thinking about some of the other jobs we got coming up in the week. I mean, my mind is constantly. And when you focus like that, I mean, like a laser beam, when you're focused, that's when you start to become successful. You cannot possibly ever. Be successful in a business without being obsessed about what you're doing. So stop looking at these guys that are in their 60s who who were toiling away 90 hours a week with for hardly anything. Right. Or maybe only able to do it because their spouse uh, was bringing home just enough bacon to allow you to even be tinkering with this thing. For decades, right. now they're in their 60s and they're sitting back with a cigar and enjoying the fruits of a lifetime of labor. And that's all and you now see. now you're going to be all jealous over it. Forget the envy. Forget the communism, which is just nothing but regulating envy. Right. Because it's not going to work. There's something out there that, that it's been proven and it's, it, it is factual. It's called the 80-20 rule. And, and remember this, whenever you start any new endeavor whatsoever, it's called the 80-20 rule. 80% of the time, you will only progress 20% of the way. It's the last 20% of the time, you will progress 80% of the way. So it's only in that last 20% of time that you actually realize all the fruit of your labor. And by and he, he's talking about the percentage of your lifetime. Yes. So if you work on a business uh, for 40, 50 years, let's say, and you started when you were young, and you're and so for that first 80% of the life of that, which would be uh, 40 years, for the first 40 years, you probably made 20% progress. Right. And the last 10 years of that 50-year span – you make an 80% leap, and that goes right back to the business that you're talking about. It's almost identical to Yeah, where the last 15 years, right. they're international now. They're they're doing all kinds Huge. of work all over the place. Well, it's what? Uh, 250 employees. Four, $4 million in sales in one month. Right. And just on a monthly basis, $4 million in sales. And, and I, I look at the guy and I talk to him. He's retired now, but we talked to him at the Christmas party, and you can clearly see. In his mind, he still cannot comprehend what it is. In his mind, he is because still for forty years. At, it just wasn't there, right? He's still at fifteen employees. It doesn't register. And I even said to him, I shook his hand when we were leaving. I said, "Hey, I just want to thank you for for all the years that you stayed at this to provide you know a job for me and my family, and we're very grateful for for all that you've done." And he just looked at me like, "Uh." Uh oh okay you're welcome I just uh. like he it, can't he can't even didn't, register that yet right that he has a direct his toil and labor has an absolute direct effect on people he'll never meet and never know i.e. my children and my children's children I mean he's affected uh, one it's funny because family alone. while you said that to him which is probably something that. That that's a, a one in a million. That, that, Nobody's probably saying that to him. To, to a, no, no, not to him. I'm talking. You take every owner of every company in the country. How many people have an employee that says something like that? It's like a once in a oh, one in a million. I never thought. Or of that. maybe one yeah. in ten million. Most of them would say, "Hey, 
I'm not going to say this to you now, but when I quit, I'm going to write a letter saying thanks for the pens <laughs> that I've been stealing from you. Yeah. And the and the and the uh the whole thing of printer paper that I take home with me. The, yeah. Yeah, thanks a lot for that. <laughs> right. That's what most people You are know thinking. that truckload of copper? Uh-huh. <laughs> My retirement package. Oh, that's Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, and for all the that the you know, that clo- you know that office closet? Yeah. I don't ever go to Staples. And you know what? The one that we have is never locked. It's not locked. Like, they have duct tape on the door hey, to keep it from locking. What are you doing with those pens? Uh, you know, I got uh, something to do at home. I, 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 I <laughs> at home? Pens. At home? You, you're taking a whole pack of pens? Well, yeah, it's for the year. Uh, yeah. I might, might lose one here yeah. and there. Well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so there's, there's a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of capitalism just creeping through. Um, we, I don't know, we're, we're getting close to the end here. Um, I know we've got, I'd like to throw this one out, this one. These are the people that are leading this country astray. Uh-oh. <laughs> I mean, when you talk about Obama, you talk about the people he surrounds himself with, they're either uh, I, I, Eric Holder uh, who's a criminal within himself. Total criminal. Uh, he just, should be in prison. Oh, unbelievable. And then now you've got uh, uh, John Kerry, who we've talked about before. Apparently he's at a conference, an international conference, and he makes a, um, a statement. Before God created man, he created heavens and earth. Confronting climate change is, in the long run, one of the greatest challenges that we face. And you can see this duty or responsibility laid out in scriptures, clearly, beginning in Genesis. It's clearly. And Muslim-majority countries are among the most vulnerable. Our response to this challenge ought to be rooted in a sense of stewardship of earth. And for me and for many of us here today, that responsibility comes from God. What do you make of all that? Well, it sounds like he's trying to say since that that um, you know he call, talks about stewardship of the earth, which he's. Are you saying? Are you? What are you saying that he's saying that we need to save the earth? The title of this news article with this video that was attached to it clearly a global warming thing. Here. Yeah, it was. Um, uh, John Kerry says that God is. Um, that that global warming is a God-given thing for us to fix and take care of Muslims. I really don't understand where he's going with the Muslim. Thing, I didn't but get I, that either. Uh, where, right, what, I, what was that all about? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to ignore that and let's discuss uh, what. <laughs> so what he says: so, God put you, Carrie, on this earth to f- to. Make sure that the global warming is taken care of. But you're creating global warming. Right, and that's the part that he didn't mention. And obviously, by, by listening to that and the way he tried to word that, he either forgot <laughs> or he conveniently <laughs> left out because he knew that it wasn't going to work. That the whole point of global warming, if you follow it or if you believe in it or you read the news on it, whatever it may be, is that. This wouldn't, we wouldn't be talking about global warming or creating policy around global warming if it wasn't a known thing throughout the liberal community that it's man-made. Right. Well, that's what they're, they're screaming, that it's man-made global yeah, warming. Yeah, because if it wasn't man-made, then we wouldn't be able to do anything about it anyway other than to pray that it goes away, right? Well, uh, the, a lot of pollution... And you know is from volcanoes. So if and by you pollution can, you mean carbon dioxide, right? So if because you, real scientists, real ones, will tell you that carbon dioxide is not pollution, right? It's right. just a a, co- a chemical compound that's part of the air. So <laughs> if you can stop volcanoes from erupting, if you can. Undo weather patterns. Forget volcanoes for a second here. Every single leaf that falls off of every single plant <laughs> yeah. in the entire 
world as soon as it drops off that tree. Because when it's on the tree, it absorbs carbon dioxide and converts it into oxygen. That's what plants do. Right. So when you breathe out, the plant breathes that in. Yeah, it's like the opposite of animals. And then gives you back the oxygen you need to breathe. Right, but here's what you don't know because the liberals are suppressing this from you. As soon as that leaf falls off the tree, the instant it does, it starts to decompose. And part of the chemical um, reaction of decomposition is the release of carbon dioxide. When things decompose, it is releasing the carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. So every fall, when you got piles and piles and piles of leaves everywhere, that that is actually releasing, among other things, carbon dioxide. Cow flatulence. Ca- cows far- when a cow farts, the reason it is carbon dioxide, among other things, is because it ate all that grass. Well, they said that, that it's because Americans eat so much beef that we're causing global warming because our because cows of all are the farting. Cows. Here's what they're not telling you. If the cow didn't eat the grass that caused the fart that is full of carbon dioxide, then the grass would be on the ground uh, when it died, deco- decomposing. Anyways. Yeah. And, so what you're saying, you you can't literally, in the grand scheme of things, you're really not creating or destroying. No, you're just you're con- just converting and you're recycling. You're taking oxygen and carbon, right? And you're either attaching it to make carbon dioxide, or you're detaching it to make oxygen and carbon. Right. So when a tree grows up from the ground, see, I didn't know this as a child. Actually, I didn't know this for a long time. Well, you probably recently. don't know these things unless you're taught them. Right. My dad pointed out. That if you look at the mass of a tree, and we all know, we all should know that matter cannot be created or destroyed, right? right? I always thought that the mass, I'm talking about all that wood, all the branches, all the leaves that grow up from the ground come from the soil. The soil make, you know, converts itself into wood through the life of a tree, and then it makes the tree. But if that were true... You run out of dirt. Well, no, no, not that. But <laughs> no, but the dirt, the the tree would drop into a hole. Right, because it the was hole, eating its way down. Because the the soil, as it turns into a tree, would disappear from the ground, and then the tree would drop. Dude, that's funny. So wh- why is it not dropping into a hole? Because the tree's not made out of the soil. It's made out of the carbon from the carbon dioxide in the air. It. The leaf takes the carbon dioxide, the oxygen is released, and the right. carbon turns into the tree. Wow. Well, and if you know anything, you know everything is based and made of carbon. Right. Well, every, every living thing. Every, every living, living thing. thing. So then when you burn that tree, what? you're taking the carbon and reacting it with the oxygen in the air and creating carbon dioxide in the burn. Right. That's what's happening when you burn a tree, when you burn a log. But that carbon dioxide was not created by you from nowhere. It was enabled to be created by you because originally it was carbon dioxide. Then it turned into oxygen and carbon. And you're just reintroducing it. That's right. all you're doing. So when you burn a log and it turns black, that's what's left over is the carbon. There's some carbon left. But right. there, but a lot of that carbon was turned back into carbon dioxide back in. So most and, of it And is released as heat... Light, energy, I mean, all those things are yeah. tra- changed. Yeah. You've taken a log, you set it on fire, you've burned it. Oh, it's not there anymore because so you energy release. R- right, you've changed it to something else. Right, when you turn... You don't make it disappear. Yeah, when you turn carbon dioxide into... Uh, uh, I'm sorry, when you take carbon and you turn it back into carbon dioxide, which is called burning, um, <laughs> it releases heat, uh, so much heat, that you see fire. Right. Which would be heat and light. Right. And that's where the fire comes from. But anyway, that's, your, that's our little physics lesson for the day. But, it, but it's, the amount of carbon released by dead living things decomposing is where most of the carbon dioxide comes from. Right. And, and, so, you, and you capture it again by growing a tree. Right. And so all these lefties, it's another war to fight. All these lefties have invented this war to fight. Of global warming and uh, the the rise in levels of carbon dioxide. And we have to stop 
The oh, levels. I got to get back to blasting. Uh, yes. So, so what uh, Biden said was Kerry. that. But then it's all the same. What Biden said was John Kerry. Oh, jo- oh, that was John, John Kerry. Kerry. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, sorry. But yeah, so, Uncle Joe, John what, Kerry. They're all they're all a bunch of idiots. <laughs> yes. So what John Kerry said was um, that Genesis in Genesis, God created man in order to combat this global warming <laughs> via being stewards of the earth. But I said, now wait a minute. If God sent us here in order to stop global warming. If the left is right about global warming, we created it. And if God really didn't want global warming, then he wouldn't have created man. If the left is right. Right? Right. If the left is correct, right. then w- that means, therefore, we created global warming. And if we're sent here to combat global warming that we created, doesn't that not make any sense? God God created man in order to c- combat the global warming that he created that God that uh that man created. Wow. That would be like Tw- twisted logic. Yeah, that would Tortured be tortured logic. That would be like uh creating uh God creating cancer in order to combat the cancer in man. <laughs> or so it just doesn't you make need any sense. In order to remove the cancer from your body, you need to introduce cancer to get rid of the cancer. I'm going to go ahead and label this as a Freudian slip. Because for him to believe that means that he also knows that man is not creating global warming. Even if global warming was real. First of all, it's not real. But let's just say we have real global warming. It's not man-made. He knows it because if he if he if he thought that it was real, if he thought that man was responsible for this fictitious global warming, then he couldn't say that God created man to combat it. No, it's not possible. <laughs> Debunked ridiculous. once again. It's just, it's just another one of the fights that they do. You're not going to beat us in logic. No, of course not. Especially not the two of us. No, it's just wow. Not um, I, that's all the stuff I have in my stack of stuff other than, oh, there was a report that came out said, uh, since 2007, all the, uh, employment growth from 2007 till now, all the employment growth come from immigrant workers. Oh, well, that's nice. That was from the Washington Examiner. Oh, <sighs> That's why we need more immigrants. <laughs> because, because we get more people on wealth on, on unemployment and we've got all this money going back into the economy and it'll trickle up. And, and so we need more immigrants oh. and more workers. What how, what do they say in that Tom and Jerry uh cartoon? Don't you believe it. <laughs> oh. oh wow. And then there was another one uh Obama came out and said uh, I'm not done yet. Apparently, he's got a lot uh, on his plate. Well, he's got a lot of communism to install. Yeah. So, like some of the other uh, talk show hosts that we know that we, uh, we we agree with and learn from, especially Rush Limbaugh, uh, he says frequently, and I agree, that uh, we need to uh, put on our seatbelts. Because uh, as soon as the new year comes, January 1st, you got the Republican Senate, you got the uh, Republican House of Representatives of Congress, and now you got Obama. Am I allowed to not hold my breath? No, you don't have to hold your breath. But put on your seatbelt because this is going to be a bumpy ride. The, the the GOP. At the very least, I hope they stop him. Well, but I uh, got a feeling. John Boehner deals. just gave him one point one trillion dollars. So yeah, I don't, deals are going to be made. I don't see that happening. Boehner is just a a leftist uh, masquerading as a righty. Yep, without Simple a doubt. Thing. So I guess that's that's all for the show for for this week, folks. Thank you for listening. Uh, follow us on uh, Twitter at Smith Radio, and you can Facebook, listen to Smith us. Radio. Yes, uh, listen to us on iHeartRadio and uh, uh, subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. Yep, and you can now find us on iHeart very very easily by typing in SmithRadio.com. dot com. Really? It will take you directly to iHeartRadio. I all I did was type in. I may have only even typed in Smith, and that's Smith oh, with for the, in the search. In, in, in the, the search. search. Yeah. Or you can actually type in Smith Radio, two words, and it'll pop up. 
And uh, make sure you spell it right, S-M-Y-T-H. Or you can type in smyth.com. Really? And yeah. it'll show up? It's a forward URL. On the, uh, uh, I'm talking about it from the smartphone. I did it. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> there you go. It's our, so our URL, smithradio.com, will forward you to iHeart. It used to forward you to Spreaker. Okay. So we're, we're pushing for iHeart. <laughs> all right, folks. Have a good evening. See you next week.